Hello everyone, we will continue with the particle capture mechanisms. So, as I have mentioned in last class, the there are various uh, capture mechanisms, inertial impaction, direct interception, Brownian diffusion, gravity settling and electrostatic capture. So, this is the diagram which is showing the inertial impaction. So, it means here as I have already explained the rate path is shown the air or fluid path and this black color dot is the particle. So, due to the inertia this particle is not following the air stream and striking the fiber and deposited at that point. Direct interception the particle with a lower dimension lower size due to their lower inertia they can follow the path of air and get trapped inside the structure where the particle diameter is higher than the diameter of the pores and Brownian diffusion due to the Brownian motion the particle strikes the fiber surface and gets settled on that and gravity settling here due to the mass of the particle it gets separated from the air stream and the electrostatic attraction due to different charge the particle gets attracted by the fiber filter medium and gets separated from the air stream. So, straining and sieving which is actually would take place when the distance between the fiber that is pore size is smaller than the particle size they get directly trapped by the filter medium. So, this type of filtration take place for coarse filter with a larger size particle. So, for metal fiberglass roll filters are the examples of this. So, as per ASH RAE astray 52.5 standard so, what is astray American society of heating refrigerating and air conditioning engineers this is this is a society which forms the uh, standards for filters and as per that standard the efficiency for this type of sieving or straining type filter is at the level of 4 to 6 that is the efficiency that means 4 to 6 lower the MERV value lower will be the filtration efficiency. Here we require the fabric with lower GSM 50 to 100 gram per square meter and this type of filtration it can take place at very high velocity. So, if we want coarser filter so that in that case we can use higher velocity, but for very fine particle filtration we have to reduce the velocity of fluid intercepts impaction. So, it is directly impacted. So, due to the inertia effect and it is primarily around 1 micron and above size particle. So, it should be more than typically 1 micron and this effect of inertial impaction increases with the increase in particle size and increase in velocity because higher the velocity of air higher will be the 
inertia of that particle. So, that chances of impaction will be more and larger particle will have higher inertia, but here the efficiency is more than the straining system. It is a 6 to 8 where arrestance percent is 90 percent around 90 percent and media velocity is 100 feet per minute. So, it is lower than earlier one 100 feet per minute it is more than that. So, earlier case it was 500 interception this is typically around 0 0.5 to 3 micron range this effect interception effect increase with the increasing particle size and decreasing fiber diameter because it is interception. So, lower the fiber diameter lower will be the fiber to fiber distance. So, that will actually enhance the interception possibility of interception and it is increasing it increases with the increase in particle size. So, this principle is used in case of back filters, rigid filters, V weight filters. So, this type of filters use this type of uh, interception principle mechanism. So, here efficiency it is it is higher than earlier it is 9 to 16 MERV value where arrestance particle arrestance is 95 percent and more and media velocity you can see here it is lower much lower than earlier. So, here media velocity media velocity is 35 feet per minute. So, as we go on increasing the filtration efficiency we try to increase the filtration efficiency we have to reduce the media velocity. The diffusion here diffusion takes place with very small size particle less than typically 0.5 micron and this effect of diffusion it increases with increasing fiber diameter and reduced velocity and particle size. So, if the particle size reduces the Brownian motion the Brownian diffusion will increase and higher fiber diameter means there will be a surface present where the particle can get settled and lower velocity is required as I have mentioned because the particle the Brownian motion is maximum in case of the steel air. Okay. It happens with all filters in any filter it can happen, but the particle size should be low and velocity should be low and it is more predominant as efficiency increases. So, that is why so this uh, if the particles are less and Brownian motion if we want to impart this mechanism we have to reduce the velocity. Another technique is that another mechanism is that electrostatic charges. So, the charges of attraction so uh, this uh, fiber is charged with positive charge whereas, the particle with negative charge get attracted and this effect increases with increase in charge on the fiber if we charge the fiber with higher amount that will attract more and more particle and also increase in the charge of particle decreasing particle size. So, if we reduce the particle size at lower size particle the attraction force of attraction will be more and 
reducing velocity. So, this is actually it, it will give best result when the particle velocity or velocity of the stream is low. The electrostatic filter the utilizes the large diameter fiber rely on electrostatic charges. So, large diameter fibers are generally charged because the of the cost and the resistance to air flow. So, large diameter fibers if we use to produce the filter medium due to their open area due to their less specific surface area the air flow will increase, but that fiber surface those fiber surfaces will actually attract the smaller particle. However, these filters often lose their electrostatic charge over time because of the decay and because of the continuous uh, fiber particle deposition the, the charges on the fiber gets neutralized the particle capture on the surface occupies charge site therefore, neutralize their electrostatic charges. These are used in case of back filter, rigid filters, plated filters and here the efficiency is at the range of 9 to 15. If we see the overall diagram of particle size and filtration efficiency based on different filtration mechanism, this is inertial impaction. It typically it is around say 0.5 micron and above is inertial impaction. Interception where it starts with the lower particle size as the particle size increases the filtration efficiency increases. On the other hand the diffusion it starts with a very low particle size and as the particle size increases the contribution of diffusion reduces electrostatic charge if we want electrostatic charge it is ok otherwise without electrostatic charge typically these three mechanisms are important and we must know that any particle any dust particle present in air it is a combination of very small particle mixture of very small particle and large particles. So, all three mechanisms they take place at a time depending on the type of size size and condition their proportion their weightage may vary, but overall these three mechanisms are always there and if we take combined efficiency the nature of curve is like this dotted line this follows dotted line that is initially at lower diameter lower particle size very low particle size the particle the filtration efficiency is high where the brownian diffusion is predominant but as we increase the particle size it gradually reduces due to reduction in brownian diffusion but after that after certain particle size it again increases this is due to the inertial impaction and interception this is the type of typical curve and if we use the electrate filter electrostatic charge we can have little bit higher filtration efficiency enhanced filtration efficiency, but the the typical shape of the curve remains same. Now, this is the type of relationship as I have already discussed and here if we see this is the 
retention percent in y axis and in x axis it is a particle size. So, in case of surface filtration it this is this two curves shows a surface filtration and depth filtration. In case of surface filtration with the increase in particle size retention percent suddenly increases because of definite size of the pore. But in case of depth filtration with the particle size it gradually increases. This picture shows a filter fabric where combined non oven and nano fiber waves non oven fabric is uh, where nano fiber waves are deposited this type of filters they have their own application area special electrospan nano wave on a polyester non oven substrate they have their applica application area now what are the raw materials used in filter fabrics so different types of raw materials are used natural fiber and synthetic fiber they are used so natural fiber synthetic fiber man made fibers and also bicomponent fibers are majorly used in case of air filtration in air filtration we use uh, bicomponent fibers so we'll discuss so natural fiber cotton hemp sisal jute all these fibers are used wool wood pulp these fibers are used in filter fabric the, their advantage is that uh, biodegradable they are absorbent their cost is low so due to that all this so we can use natural fiber uh, among the man made fibers we use polypropylene polyester polyamide acrylic viscose rayon so this all fibers we can use depending on the type of application sometime we can use carbon or glass fiber we can also use for very high temperature filtration application we can we have to use the fiber with high melting point so main advantages are attractive combination are possible they have their uniform fiber dimension so that we can act, we can engineer the uh, filter medium fiber continuity is the filter uh, so filaments we can use like for mesh application we can use uh, uh, filaments if we see the bicomponent fibers there are different types of bicomponent fibers possible so where we can use polymers of two different melting points so these are like there are different types of arrangement coarsheet arrangement side by side segmented pipe so island in sea is very common in uh, bicomponent fiber type so all this like segmented ribbon tipped so these are the different shapes and their constituents are pp pt p nylon and different other fibers so here one component will have the higher melting point fiber and other component will have lower melting say so like polyester with high melting point than polypropylene so we can have polyester polypropylene island in sea here this dot these are polyester and the green fibers are this component is polypropylene now once we manufacture the non oven fabric out of this and after that this fabrics are subjected to heat treatment maybe by steam or 
superheated steam or hot air. Due to that the fiber or component polymer with lower melting point melts and they join each other and that forms a stable structure. That stable structure definite structure is important for and at the same time that total structure is a porous. So, stable porous medium is produced where there will be definite pore structure the, those pore structures will not get changed with the pressure or with during handling. So, we will get the uniform or stable filtration characteristics from this type of bicomponent fibers. So, bicomponent fibers are used for filter fabric because of the reason their structures are stable and they maintain the proper air flow and they maintain the lower pressure drop during entire lifespan. Their pressure drop does not change, but on the other hand normal non oven if we use during use the non oven gets compressed and they themselves block the pores. So, the air pressure air pressure drop increases. So, that is why bicomponent fibers are very important for air filtration application. There are different non oven technologies used. So, in non oven fabric manufacturing first fiber preparation process then wave preparation and wave bonding processes. In wave bonding can be done by mechanical bonding or by chemical bonding. So, mechanical bonding typically it is a needle punching, chemical bonding it is adhesive bonding or thermal bonding it is heat calendaring process or in case of this bicomponent fibers these are bonded by thermal treatment by hot air. Now, coming to the properties of filter fabric there are different properties. Properties we can actually divide into three distinct classification one is filtration related properties then physical properties and after that mechanical properties. All these three different properties are important among the filtration properties the filtration efficiency, penetration, beta ratio, pressure drop, permeability and filter life and filter arrestage. These are the main properties related to filtration properties and physical properties physical nature of filter fabric like thickness, density, bulk, uh, mass per unit area, dimensional stability, pore structure. So, these are the different properties related to physical nature of fabric and mechanical properties as we know the tensile characteristics tear and busting they are very important as far as performance of filter fabrics are concerned. So, let us first start with the filtration related property first it is a filtration efficiency. So, this is the quantity quantity in terms of mass or a volume or number of particles. So, quantity of contaminants removed by the filter medium express in terms of percentage. So, efficiency percentage is equal to n in minus n out by n in n is the mass volume or number of particles in the upstream side and n out 
means number of particles or mass of particle which has coming out from the filter media which has not been arrested by the filter medium during filtration. So, this if it is expressed in terms of percentage of the input material. So, that is filtration efficiency. Now, here in filtration efficiency if we, we take care of we take into account of the mass volume or number it can be mass or volume or number. So, if it is based on mass or whether it is based on number it does not matter it will we can call it as filtration efficiency, but to differentiate this filtration efficiency we can term in two different ways one is arrestance another is collection efficiency. Arrestance is the term where we use the particles in terms of mass. So, when you use the particle the mass of the particle which is entering in the upstream side and mass of particle actually coming out from the filter medium. If we express the filtration efficiency in this term then we will call it as arrestance person, but if we use the term in terms of number of particles then this filtration efficiency will be called as collection efficiency. Just to differentiate the nature of measurement we can use arrestance or collection efficiency. So, collection efficiency is number of particle in the upstream side and number of particle which is going out from the filter medium the difference that is the this difference is the actual number of particles arrested by the by the filter medium by divided by the number of particle fed. Another term which is penetration. Penetration is again number weight or volume of fiber it is a ratio of number of fiber going out and number of fiber number of particles actually coming. So, it is feeding or number or maybe mass mass or volume. So, we can use any this ratio of this two terms if we use in terms of percent then it is called penetration percent and beta ratio is another term which is just reciprocal to the penetration. In beta ratio it will be n in by n out n in by n out it is a reciprocal that is a number of upstream particle or by number in the downstream particle, but here it is based on the number only number of particle it is not the mass of particle and this is expressed in terms of in a for a particular diameter particular size of particle. So, beta ratio is not like other term it is not like uh, overall average term it is a size specific term. So, that means for a particular size so for 1 micron particle for 1 micron particle how many particles were there in the upstream and how many particles were there in downstream the ratio is beta ratio for one um, that particle size. So, n in for d is the number of input that is upstream particles of diameter d or greater. So, for that particle or more part more size what is the efficiency the ratio that is called beta ratio. Beta ratio is basically 
it is a uh, it is a reciprocal of uh, this penetration and it is for a particular size. So, if we try to see relationship the filtration efficiency equal to 1 minus penetration efficiency and as it is a uh, reciprocal. So, this is the type of relationship it is a percent and beta ratio is the it is only ratio it is not in the percent. So, that is the relationship, but here beta ratio is for a particular particle size particle size and above that particle size and above and pressure drop as I have already mentioned it is the difference in pressure between the upstream side and downstream side. So, upstream side pressure is always high higher than downstream side pressure. So, ideally we should try to keep the pressure drop as low as possible. Higher pressure drop means higher energy required at the same time the filtration will not be uh, proper because during filtration it is important to allow the air to pass. Now, let us see the importance of pressure drop here, why pressure drop is important here. See suppose we are if we block all the pores, there is no pore, it is a polythene sheet, any sheet of particles with airs are moving. So, as there is no opening, so it will not allow any particle, allow any particle through pass through. So, that means it will create very high pressure drop. So, filtration as far as filtration is concerned, there is no filtration is taking place. Basically for filtration we must allow the air to pass through this. Even if during due to that some particles are going out of the other surface it is allowed, but air must flow otherwise actually the filtration process is not initiated. Here in this case filtration process has not initiated. Okay. So, the medium filtered medium will only work when there is opening. It is better to allow particles to pass through than arresting. So, if we try to block the pores then there will be high pressure drop. Although we may get higher filtration efficiency, higher filtration efficiency, but that is not going to help. I will tell, so we have say two options, one is higher filtration efficiency, mu higher filtration efficiency or higher air flow or lower pressure drop. So, higher air filtration efficiency if we get with the lower air uh, higher air flow then it is ok or, or with lower pressure drop then it is ok. But if we want to achieve say 100 percent filtration efficiency by very high pressure dropped and very low air flow that means, the effectively the filtration is not taking place. Because air if air flows then only particles will come with the air otherwise if air flows at very slow rate in that case the filtration will not take place. So, and particles um, that pressure drop if it is high as I have mentioned it will create higher energy requirement. So, permeability 
permeability is very important. We must know the permeability of the filter medium, which is quantity of air, volume of volume flow rate per unit area, unit cross sectional area. So, cubic meter per square meter per second. So, this is the unit. So, after this understanding all this uh, filtration related terms, now we will discuss the instruments for measuring the filtration characteristics. There are different instruments available. So, this instruments which we are discussing now are for air filtration. The air filters can be of vertical orientation or it can be horizontal orientation. So, this in this instrument vertical orientation here air permeability is measured, pressure drop created across the filter fabric and how the filter that pressure drop changes with the time that can be monitored here. Filtration efficiency of filter fabric, cleaning efficiency of filter fabric, these are the different parameters we can measure. So, it the instrument is capable of measuring the filtration behavior of non oven, oven, knitted fabrics. So, area of filter fabrics here is 150 square centimeter. So, this filter filtration instrument has got different components dust feeder, stepper motor, attachment for dust dispersion. So, dust feeder is uh, it, it actually feeds the dust at certain uh, rate where which is controlled by stepper motor. So, we need to know the dust loading and after feeding dust has to be dispersed evenly. So, upper vertical pipe is there where through which dust is being deposited and lower vertical type, uh, pipe is there, vacuum cleaner is there to actually to clean the filter surface, attachment is there to move the lower vertical pipe up and down, inclined tube manometer to measure the pressure difference vacuum pump, variable area rotameter to measure the air flow rate, control valve and vacuum pump. So, this is the instrument here. Here the motor actually is required to for dust feeder and dust dispersion arrangement where dust is getting dispersed and mixed with the air. Here it is a holder for filter fabric, this is a filter fabric holder manometer is placed just below the filter fabric to monitor the air pressure and here is the vacuum pump is there, vacuum pump which suck the air through the filter fabric and after certain time. So, if we know the dust feed rate, after certain time we know the actual quantity of dust fed and we can take the filter out and take the mass again and the difference in mass which will give idea about the particles arrested by the filter medium and from there we can calculate the filtration efficiency. And through the this rotameter we can calculate the flow rate and flow rate and knowing the dimension of the filter fabric, we can calculate the air permeability. This is the screw dust feeder where the dust outlet is there, front view and side view. So, hopper is here where we actually feed the dust and through the screw rod the dust is fed. So, by changing the speed of this 
screw rod we can change the dust feed rate. So, we can calculate the air permeability, porosity, dust loading of the by this filter filtration instrument dust loading. So, porosity is the parameter which shows the amount of pores available in the filter fabric. So, phase velocity we can measure, pressure drop can be measured here. So, we can monitor all these characteristics, all these parameters by this instrument. So, filtration efficiency is expressed by the weight of dust collected by fabric as I have mentioned and total weight of dust fed and cleaning efficiency this fabric can be cleaned by reverse air flow again and cleaning efficiency is expressed by dust removed total dust removed from the fabric by total dust retained by the fabric. This is the total dust collected. So, total dust removed by total dust retained by the fabric. So, from there we can calculate the cleaning efficiency. It is important to know the cleaning efficiency because we have to reuse the filter fabric once again. Ideally, there should be very high cleaning efficiency so that the performance will be better and it is a filter life will be longer and outlet concentration of particles can be measured. So, M p is the mass of particles passed by the filter it is giving at a given filtration time t is the time volumetric flow. So, outlet concentration is also important because that uh, after filtration what are the how much particles are coming out from the filter medium we must know. So, that we can we can use another filter or micro filter that that indication we can get from this parameter. So, these are the different uh, parameters we have discussed. So, we have again modified the earlier filter filtration instrument. Here the dust feeders are actually automatic control by the software. So, which controls the speed of the motor to control the uh, dust feed rate and online measurement of filtration efficiency is there where the filtration efficiency is measured here on the basis of number of particles not on the basis of mass of particle. So, here we have used two particle counters electronic particle counters we, we one sensor of part particle counter is fitted upper vertical pipe just above the filter fabric and another we have placed just below the filter fabric. So, if we see here this is one particle counter another particle counter is here and both the particle counters are attached with the controller system and which is connected with the computer. Now, during the filtration process this particle counters they continuously count the number of particle or concentration of particle in the upstream side as well as in the downstream side they constantly monitor and convert into filtration efficiency continuously we get. So, here we can monitor with the time. So, initially what has been observed the filtration efficiency is low because the formation of cake or may be larger particles the depth filtration depth loading was taking place, but after certain time when the cakes were formed or depth loading completed, then we have observed the filtration efficiency has increased and at the same time gradually the pressure drop also increases. 
So, after certain time when pressure drop is very high, so we have to stop the experiment. So, this instrument is it gives automatic uh, online uh, data of filtration efficiency. Another instrument where the orientation of the instrument is in horizontal fashion. Here again we have used particle counters. So, the one it is aerosol particle generator here we, uh, we can generate the aerosol particle where particles are mixed with air and then it is pumped through the fabric through this channel. So, here this is a duct through the duct the dust loaded air is passing we can control the dust concentration depending on the standard depending on the application and this is the test medium and these are the differential pressure gauges. This is differential pressure gauge which constantly monitor the pressure difference or pressure drop sample holder this is sample holder upstream particle counter 5 and this is downstream particle counter like earlier one. So, these two particle counters the data from these two will be used for calculating the filtration efficiency. Here it is a flow control valve we can control the flow depending on our requirement if we require higher velocity or whether we require lower velocity. So, that depending on the standard we can control this flow velocity here flow meter here it is a flow meter. So, which controls the which will measure the air flow rate and suction pump is here. So, the overall arrangement is similar to earlier one, but here the orientation is horizontal orientation. So, filter life is another important characteristic we must know because the dust holding capacity of filter medium we must know if it exceeds filter life exceeds that means there are excess pressure drop either there are excess pressure drop or there may be some damages which will cause the improper filtration. If the particles are trapped permanently inside the structure which we cannot actually uh, remove or clean. So, the filter in that case needs to be changed. So, we will other parameters are here it is a mass per unit area there is a physical parameters are there mass per unit area is important characteristics for filter fabric thickness is another parameter bulk density. So, bulk or density so by uh, density it is defined as the weight per unit volume of filter. So, this is the density rho which is by weight that is a mass per unit volume and ultimately if we know the mass per unit area and thickness the ratio of mass per unit area and thickness is actually indirectly it gives idea about the density of fabric. Similarly, bulk is the reciprocal of density. So, this is just reciprocal thickness by the mass per unit area. Solidity and porosity, the solidity is defined by the ratio of volume of solid that is fiber material to the volume of filter. So, solid solidity is the volume of fiber by 
volume of filter. So, that is the solidity and it is a mu is the solidity and if we see the volume of fiber by volume of filter and ultimately it is basically mass per unit area of filter by thickness of filter and divided by density of fiber. So, from there we can calculate the solidity of filter medium and porosity is basically it is defined by 1 minus solidity. So, that is the uh, uh, relationship that is porosity is 1 minus solidity which is very important uh, term which is important parameter for uh, filter fabric and pore structures are also very important to measure. So, there are different uh, uh, techniques for measurement mainly this picture shows there are three types of pores one is closed pore where it is covered from all the sides next is blind pore the pore started from one surface and it is actually it ends in between and another is through pores that is it is from one surface to other surface it actually it uh, it's continues for filtration this through pores are important. So, blind pore and closed pore is not important for filtration. So, in next class I will discuss the pore structure how to measure the pore size pore distribution and also I will discuss different types of filter fabrics till then thank you.